Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rafe Gal. Uh, this is Regalia of Men and Monarchs, which is a new game that came out a couple days ago. Um, I funded it on Kickstarter ugh, like a year and a half, two years ago, and it finally came out. I'd almost completely forgotten about it, and it was way above my expectations. Uh, I posted about it on Facebook. Someone asked if I could throw a video up because it seemed like something they would enjoy. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, okay. I'm kind of... Uh, my intention here is just going to be to play the first chunk of the game. Uh, kind of like what I did with Blaster Master. Um, Our story begins in the Rashtil Expanse, where the wind so, races across empty plains. Right it off the bat, sad, hostile land. this is not some frontier, cheapo game. <laughs> to lands unknown. Uh, past, you know, Rashtil they, they use their, their the Kickstarter of well. Ruled by the it's great house Lord. fully voice acted. Indeed, uh, the art is really interesting. Known as the lots of the good world, hand, uh, lots of good hand drawn races stuff. Under the sun. But the Crusades changed that. It has a Attracting pretty straight forward story so far. Of war. With its but bones it's more rest. of those. City it's more that it's one of those. Uh, until now. It's, it's, got, it's very character heavy. Lies on his deathbed. For his entire it's very life, fun. A secret. Like, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Revealed. There's lots of... His only son, uh, Kay, lots of humor. Escalia belongs to his family, the noble house Lauren. As the sole remaining the intro's heir, pretty straightforward and serious. And then you get to meet the, the characters kingdom. for real. And it's like, Aided oh, his two okay. And a trusty bodyguard. Young K sets out on a journey to the Rashtil Expanse, to Ascalia. Okay. The legend is about to be retold. It goes into that awesome little, uh, little riff there. There are a lot of loading screens. That's one downside. And so, on a promise made on the father's dying breath, our hero arrives to fulfill his destiny. For great justice! You'll notice the name doesn't match there. Wait, but that's not our hero. <laughs> This is a somewhat recurring joke throughout the this game. This is our hero. I can't feel my legs. Steal yourself, young master. Right. This place is a mess. Not quite what I was expecting. Ah, but surely you aim to restore this place to glory, young master. You are, after all, its rightful ruler. Well... What a terrible, terrible dump. Glorious kingdom, my ass. Remind me, whose idea was it to come here again? Actually, I'm pretty sure both of you insisted. Come on, sis, isn't this exciting? It's like we're heroes of a book, on an adventure, or something. <sighs> well, I suppose we may as well try to salvage something from this terrible misunderstanding of a trip. Uh, salvage? Onwards, minions, to the castle. Maybe there's something valuable left, at least. Minions? So there's our main cast. Uh, it introduces a lot of characters in fairly rapid succession here. This is just a little tutorial to show you how to, uh, how to move around and talk to people. <laughs> Most of the game 
doesn't take place in that view. It's only while you're in buildings, which is pretty rare. Honestly, they could have done the whole thing menu-based. Okay. I'm gonna go up to Castle Lauren. Not much of an improvement. Ugh, don't remind me. Loot and scoot, boys! Well, at least she has her priorities straight. Look, young master, such exquisite pieces of armor. <laughs> Sorry if I'm not talking here. I feel like talking over the game talking is kind of weird. No, wait. Rat poop. I must say, the inhabitants must have had a remarkable grasp on... <laughs> What's this, big bro? Just some tea I found in a pot nearby. Tastes like dust and ashes, but, you know, it's still tea, right? Our hero. <laughs> Wait, what? You do realize that you just poured stuff from an urn, as in literal ashes? Moment of silence. <laughs> oh, shit. Intrusion! Who dare? Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. You, the one with the dire need of a haircut! <laughs> what have you done to my remains? Well, apparently, I have drank them. This is an outrage! My rest interrupted! My remains defiled! Prepare for severe punishment! <laughs> Just kidding. How are you doing? I... what? <laughs> Don't do what on me, son. You're the one who drank my ashes, so you know. Some matters, eh? Maybe an introduction? I... That a thing? Do you often wander into other fellas' households, slurping their debtors? Hmm? This is Kay of House Lauren. Heir apparent to this revered establishment. Ghost or no, respect is in order. Uh, but. Oh, ho, 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 ho. so you're a Lauren, Sonny? Funny story. That would make me your grandfather. The Sinoralis of House Lauren, at your service. Okay. Well, I imagine being dead limits my options. Is this real life? So, heir apparent, is it? Good for you. I thought you'd be taller. And bulkier. And, you know, smarter. And ashes. It's stuff? really a fair no, point. <laughs> Look. Anyway, since I'm already here, might as well help you get right on track. Hmm? Fetch me the customer. Oh, joy. I don't think there's one left around. Bullshit, son. We Lawrence are proud folk. And this. This. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Just what the hell happened here? This place is a dump! At least he agrees, of all people. Seriously, what have you people done to the castle? Is it that bad? What about the village? This ain't right. This ain't right at all. But you're the heir. You'll be putting all of this back together? Well, indeed, noble spirit. As we <laughs> live and breathe, we Thanks, shall Griffith. see to it that young master will bring... Uh, Look, I'm sorry about the ashes, and I appreciate the offer, I really do, but we came here looking for a family estate, not ghosts and ruins. Nobody expected this. This is crazy. But you're the heir. Sorry, this just won't work out. But I must... Wait, where are you going? Kay. Kay. Wait, you lot! I ain't done with you! Ugh, kids these days! <laughs> okay. So. Here's a little beginning to our intro. Uh, beginning to the game. We get into pretty good introduction in the characters. Oh, hey guys. K is. What was that all about? K is interesting. I as a main character. My thoughts. Sure, I like the fact that he's not. To me. Griffith, basically. It's something it's different. Just too much, you know? But he's not a bad guy. It's just 
day we're heirs to an ancient city. Then it turns out that there's nothing left standing and that the whole errand was pointless. And last but not least, there's a crazy ghost who wants us, me, to rebuild this place as if I'm some sort of king. You do know you kind of stepped into that one yourself. So what is your plan, young master? We're leaving this place. But... We're not heroes. We may be of House Lauren, but so what? This place is ancient history, nothing more. Did someone say House Lauren? Enter antagonist. <laughs> well met. With whom do I have the pleasure? How rude to demand the name of another before introducing oneself. Very well. The lady has a point. Walter Crucy, I represent the Furtive Union. The Furtive Union? I take it you are not familiar with our organization, then. Speaking concisely, we are men of business. Totally sometimes not a bad guy. We invest, totally not a Slytherin. We spend, but mostly, we reclaim goods deemed impossible to vindicate. So you're debt collectors? Correct, more or less. Also, I love the fact that his but trolls have little hats on. The dark over your identity, or your rather puzzling presence in this God's forsaken place. You are not supposed to be here. Well, I do not like your tone. This is Kay, heir to House Lauren, inheritor of Ascalia, the rightful master of this city. If anyone remains the intruder, it is your entourage, Mr. Crucy. Is that true? You are the heir, young man? By the gods, Griffith. You would doubt our word? Interesting. That is an excellent turn of events. We shall kill two birds with one stone. Oh? Regretfully, I have to inform you that your holdings and possessions back home have been... confiscated. What? What? How the hell? If you truly are Kay of House Lauren, then by virtue of law, you have also inherited the obligations placed upon this land. Monetary obligations. Obligations? In short, your ancestors have left you a rather staggering debt, my lord. Show me. What? How is that even possible? The zeros need a separate sticker to fit on paper. I am afraid that for all their prestige and renown, your grandsire. Oh, so there's the the basics of the plot. <laughs> Shall we proceed with the execution? But... but I don't have that kind of money. That is unfortunate. Also ironic. And you no longer have a place to go back to. I can't believe it. All of this, the whole city, lost because of a debt? Why, no. It got destroyed during the Crusades. The debt, you see, is an older development. The Crusades? But enough angsting over history. Business first. Let me introduce you to my assistants. Ah! Mr. Knight, what are you doing? You will not harm them. Please. We are civilized people. Punching, albeit enjoyable, would give us little benefit. At least for now. The truth remains, however, that you indeed seem unable to procure funds. Thus, I propose a deal. A deal? You are a king right now, young man. Of sorts. Your title still has hold in rash till people respect it. And respect is money. I propose you seize what chance you have. Rebuild this city of yours. Revitalize it. Is this a trick? <laughs> Why would it be? Consider it an investment of trust on our part. And if I refuse? You seem to have misunderstood my position, my lord. It is not an if, not a but, not a maybe. Do it, or payment shall be extracted through different means. Considerably less pleasurable, if I may add. <laughs> Big bro. I am a reasonable man. We shall split the debts into parts, each to be paid in regular intervals. 
Would that be acceptable? You're asking us to do the impossible. No, we are asking you to do the improbable. But this is a chance now. One surely worth taking. I urge you to act as soon as possible. Time is money, and you cannot afford to waste it, my lord. And this is our cue to leave. The accord has been reached. Nothing else remains to be said. Soon, I will contact you through mail. I bid you farewell. Okay. But this is insane! The deadline is approaching. Tick tock, tick tock. For the sake of brevity, I may end up skipping at least one of the scenes right, coming up Victor? here, but. Give me a minute. I get a pretty good idea just from these introductory okay. scenes. Thoughts? Isn't it obvious? It's not like we have any other options. Yeah. Did. Did they really sell Dad's estate? That's evil! Does it change anything? Wasn't Master K planning to make his ancestors proud anyway? Well, technically... Uh, you know what? Never mind. No, go on! How do you feel about this? I'll be honest with you guys. I don't like this one bit. Aside from the debt thing, whoever or whatever should be doing spring cleaning here, it's not me. Not us. But then comes the debt thing. And we don't really have any choice anymore. I hate it! We must. Damn it. This is so depressing. Annoying, more like. What's the big deal? Can't hurt to try. And you have that alleged grandfather to help us, right? Oh, that's true. I have completely forgotten about him. I do not expect him to be happy about the debt. No, he won't be. But that's not going to be the worst part of the conversation. Ah, uh, oh well. To the castle, then. Off we go to beg and moan. Yay. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and skip this next cutscene just for the sake of not making this take forever to get into the actual game. Just because I feel like I'm just kind of watching it along and I don't know if talking alongside it is actually beneficial whatsoever. Okay. Basically, the girls are going to clean the upstairs uh, while uh, Kay and Griffith go downstairs. Okay. So, this is the battle system for the game. Uh, it is a basic tactical RPG. We're going to put Griffith in front because he's kind of our tank right now. And we're going to have Kay up here alongside him. So, one of the things I love with this game so far, uh, so each character has five moves. There's no huge spell list or anything. Each character has five moves, and that includes their basic attack. I also love that K, since he is the way he is, his main move isn't attacking. It's healing. Uh, on, on that note, you can't actually heal people's health. What you can do is give them shields. So, we give Griffith shields. And then we're gonna move forward a little bit. Um, all of the other moves, you can see in the top right there, next to the little circle with the arrows, have a refresh timer. Griffith is our tank for now. He's really slow, but we want to get him up into combat right away. So we're going to use his uh, move here called Dynamic Entry, which gives him a dash. No he just about killed that rat. Um, for the sake of showing off something else, uh, one of the other things is in the top left here, you get authority points. Uh, you, you have two authority points, you can use someone's ultimate move. Otherwise, you can use it to do a blitz, which gives you a bonus action. Push them back. We're gonna no. use his base move there. Okay. 
Okay. A lot of this game involves status effects. Uh, you see there, Griffith got weakened. Um, we're actually going to use uh, Inspire, one of Hay's moves here. Watch this. Uh, weaken lowers your attack. This gives uh, another status effect. Let's see. It's, uh, empowered, which increases it back up. So, just kind of a neat thing. Uh, you also see here, each character also has a s static ability um, for K. Every three actions, he randomly gives one of his friends a buff. It's kind of neat. It's rarely actually useful, but when it is, it's really useful. Okay. Uh, that weaken isn't going to stack. So he's... He's gonna be weakened for a couple rounds, but That's it's not side. like it makes it worse. So he's back down at his neutral. Um, we're gonna have him use Crescent Strike. You can see here, it's in an arc, and he's going to miss horribly. Uh, unfortunately, that is kind of... Ooh. Okay. That guy must have had an AoE, and it has a special uh, effect there. Okay. We're going to have K continue uh, supporting Griffith here. We're going to use K's ultimate. To give a lot of shields there. And then we're going to have him move around. You can see there, now Griffith has a lot of shields available. Um, should be okay, even if he gets hit a couple more times. The time is now. Okay. I'm gonna have him go kill this guy. Uh, his base attack uh, does a little bit of damage and applies Sundered, which makes the enemies take more damage. Okay, or as far as attacks go, we're going to use one of his actual attacks now. Um, he has a gun and a sword. Right at you. One of my minor complaints with this game is actually the accuracy rate. Uh, it, I'm sure it'll improve as I get further in the game, but especially at the beginning and especially with certain characters, your side. Accuracy is abysmal. <laughs> We're gonna try Crescent Strike again. Uh, that actually Victory gives him some extra fire. shields based on how many enemies he gets. Then we're gonna go over here. He's gonna get in position to fight the Broodmother, and I'm hoping that'll keep them from getting hit at the same time. Okay. And have K move up and use his other what? Well, uh, other weapon attack here, his sword attack. One down. Kay's actually really good overall. Um, I just love the whole idea of, you know, he's... Let us strike. His primary thing is being a manager. Okay, and we're going to use Griffith's ultimate finishing no touch. Water. May your gods take you. I, the one thing I didn't use on Griffith was uh, Boisterous Taunt, which is his... Base, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a taunt. Um, it blinds and taunts an enemy for two rounds. What is this place? An armory? Okay. Well, well. I think you should look at this, sire. Sire? Sire. What? Uh, okay. Coming. What did you find? Wait, a sketch of House Lauren's family tree? Family tree. That's exactly what we need! To complement the writing here again, well, 
I mean, they have some crude jokes in there and stuff. All things considered, the writing is pretty good, and one of the things right there, he starts calling him Sire, and Kay doesn't oh, react. But it's incomplete. Damaged. And I don't know if it was their intention it's a start. No. that he was just spaced out or if it was because he's not used to it. What do you mean? But I like to think that they intentionally made it that look at it as one he doesn't the foundation. He's not With used this, to being outside. So he doesn't even think bar. about it. Questions to answer, people to look for, names to check, a direction, so to speak, which is exactly what we need right now. I am sure that eventually we will be able to fill the blanks ourselves. Uh, you're right. Let's show this to the girls, Griffith. Agreed. And as unenthusiastic as they were, let us hope they have cleaned up the main hall. I'm sure Grandfather would nag them to death otherwise. Oh, by the way, before we go... This seems out of place. Indeed. It does not resemble any of the other armors around the castle. Thoughts? It seems Lord Amarian in origin. Sun symbols everywhere. Plenty of ornamentations, highly impractical, perhaps used for ceremonial reasons. In all honesty, it is hard to tell sometimes. Lordomar's knights like it gaudy. Lordomar? The kingdom of Lordomar to the east? Militant sun worshippers? The very same. Little exposition yes. there. <laughs> Why would a Lordomarian army but... be locked in here? We're in Rashtil. That's far, far away. Good world building, at least. A gift from a king, perhaps. Hmm, could be. I uh, think we should do something with it. If it doesn't involve Lady Gwen pawning it off for money, then yes. I was thinking more along the lines of main hall decoration, moving it somewhere more presentable. I do not see why not. All right, hop to it. Sometimes I think you and your sisters are more alike than you imagine, young master. Amazingly, that armor does come back up. By the way, if you didn't notice, it has little hints during the loading screen, which is hey, nice. You're back. How did it go? To be honest, we didn't really clean much, but we found this. What's that? Looks like a family tree. Our family tree, I assume. Yeah. You know, this may actually be useful. We're going to need stuff like this if we want to get to the bottom of this debt business. Our thoughts exactly. Oh, but it's more than that. You can't be narrow-minded in this boy. If you want to be a king, you need legitimacy. And that means history, lineage. You may frown upon this, Sonny, but there are folks who buy into this more than they buy into money. I agree. If we are to be nobility, we need the bearings of nobility. But I can't be running around dusting off chronicles. There are things to do right here, right now. Okay. You're not alone in this, big bro. Remember? Let me handle the... Mm, boring ancestry stuff. What about me? What about you? I want to help too. How about no? I think that's an excellent idea. I'd appreciate it if you two would work on this together. Are you serious? You heard him. <laughs> oh, come on, sis. Why the long face? Ah, also, I bet your duties will take you all over Rashtil, Sonny. Methinks you should also ask the nice ladies over here to look after the city while you're away. All in all, you're in this together, hmm? As a family. So are you, old fart. Ho oh, ho but I'm dead already. Can I trust you with this, then? Leave it to us. What about you, Griffith? You know my answer. I swore an oath on your father's dying breath that I would not leave your side. I shall follow you in the field should you call me to do so. Very well. What's our next step? I may have a thing, Kay. While you guys were gone, I took a sightseeing trip around the city. Turns out there are still some people living in the area. Really? Yep. There's an inn near the crossroads not far away from the gates. I saw light coming from inside, so they're most likely still in business. Here, big bro. I'll show you on the map. Ho ho ho! That's excellent news! If anything, you should go and introduce yourself. You're going to be their ruler! Ugh, mingling with peasants. What exactly will this accomplish? Now, now, young lady. A king is nothing without his subjects. Oh, my boy, one cannot rule in a vacuum. You are only as powerful as the respect you command. Never forget this. Respect of my people. Ah, at last! The Patriarch speaks my language! Duty! Service! 
Loyalty. We shall forge bonds everlasting. This, I swear. Uh, yeah. What he said. All right, I'm off to the inn. Griffith? At your side. Let's go then. Okay. I'm gonna see what all that unlocks at this point, because I think the basic structure of the game is more unlocked now. I know it progresses down at the end, but... Eh, nope. <laughs> like I said, walking around town is kind of the only time that you actually do the walking around aspect. Um, you can choose any of the locations in town. I'm actually, I am going to go up to the menu right now. So, it has a pretty solid character menu here. Uh, customization for characters there are perks which take up slots up here a weapon which each character gets their own set then they have different effects on each one and two trinkets or accessories uh, you can just look your items there uh, you have your active quests there's also kingdom quests which we'll unlock later which is basically stuff like milestones along the way there's a system of relationships with the characters. You have a five tier system where as you become better friends with the characters, you get uh, extra, extra random stuff, depending on whether they're a combat character or not. And you get interesting scenes and more character development as you go. Uh, there's a city builder aspect to it, just a little bit, and it's not super complicated, but you have eight buildings. Uh, you can upgrade each of them, but it takes money and components and stuff that you would otherwise be able to put into things like equipment. Um, and they let you do different things as you progress. There are four factions. Um, each one are, has two opposing, so there's the elves and the dwarves, and... Uh, the sorcerers and the paladins basically and it says right at the beginning here remaining attainable of reputation so you can see there's uh, four levels on each one possible um, but it, there's only goals up to the third one so I'm assuming and what I did in my original playthrough that you do level one in each to get all the perks unlocked and then pick which one you want to take up to three since you have four points to play with and then there's also this codex which is exactly what you'd expect uh goes through and it talks about the world it's got some really i mean for how potentially silly this game is at times and how over the top some of the characters are there's a lot to it and, and I can appreciate that with that being said this is the place young master welcome to the placeholder can I get you something uh, hello well met we would like to speak with the esteemed owner of this fine establishment you're weird mister why does your friend speak like a weirdo Hmm. Gods, Griffith, you just can't reel it in, can you? I'm sorry, we don't want anything. Can we speak with the owner? Sure. What do you need? Wait, wait, I think I'm not getting through. The owner, as in the guy who owns this place? Yep. And that's you? Yep. But you're like, what, 12? Yep. All right, Griffith, you win. Lend me a hand here. You're the owner, then. Are you guys slow or something? <laughs> what about that menacing gentleman behind the counter? Him? That's my dad. He works here. And? And Co owns the place, I guess. Aha! Thank you. That's what we wanted to hear. Huh. Weird. Greetings. <clears throat> Are you the owner of this inn? <clears throat> I am Kay of House Lauren. I wanted to inform you that I... <clears throat> well, uh... The rebuilding... Um, 
Please stop staring at me like that. You're freaking me out. <laughs> so, uh, the weather's nice, yes? <laughs> Come on, give me something to work with. <laughs> uh, pretty please? <laughs> oh, for the love of... I don't answer, you know. What? Baz never speaks. What do you mean he never speaks? He can't speak? Mm, Run up. Haven't ever heard him utter a word. How does he manage to run a tavern? That girl over there, Rilke, his daughter. She is a slips for all it's worth. I noticed he's a little intense. Yeah, uh, that's Baz. Staring the crap out of people one customer at a time. And you are? Shichirochi, or just Shichi. I used to fight in the war, and that's where I met Baz. Which war? Does it really matter? Hmm. Well, we're veterans, good sirs. Spending our retirement running an inn in the ass end of nowhere. Are you also an owner? Eh, uh, no. So, you're a bum. Hey, some of us quit the war with dignity. Me, I got a hole in my wallet. Also gonorrhea. I see. I take it that the inn doesn't get many visitors. Nope. Supposedly, once upon a time, these crossroads were an oft-traveled trade route. That castle over yonder, heart of a Scalia. I'm Kay of House Lauren. A Scalia once belonged to my family. Oh, yeah? Indeed. More or less, yes. <laughs> Hear that, Buzz? We got a king over here. <laughs> well, that's nice and all, but... I'm afraid you'll be having some problems getting people to resettle. How so? It's because of the beast! They're afraid of the beast! Ah! What manner of beast are you talking about, young lady? They say it's got three heads, and its eyes are like fire, and it shoots acid out of its rear? Truth be told, uh, no one knows. Hmm. But it's true. Something stalks the woods, cutting animals. People are afraid of it. They say they can feel its eyes on their necks as they travel through the forest. Now, I've heard that even elves steer clear of these parts. Yet nobody has ever actually seen this beast. Nope. Sounds like a myth, no? Indeed. Yeah, well, myth or not, it scares people. Hmm. Will you be slaying the beast, good sirs? Indeed we will. <laughs> if it truly exists, <laughs> oh, we Griffith. shall restlessly scour the land until we manage to plant a sword in its squishy yet monstrous forehead. I love that line. I don't know why. <laughs> what? Oh, it's so exciting. Could you drop by later and tell us how it went? Squishy Papa forehead. Loves stories. Right, Papa? You can tell him I love On stories. Oh, my honor. Well, then. Good luck, laddie. Happy hunting. Uh, now, wait a minute. Okay. So, that should kind of summarize what I was talking about with the characters. There's a lot of tropes that are getting hit there. Okay, so now we have the option to venture forth. We have our two characters. You can pick uh, five normally and six once you upgrade your town and there are you know all of these to pick from which you'll unlock as you go i believe these bottom four are the ones from the diplomatic missions actually in my main file i'm already up getting not getting this guy unlocked okay so when you venture forth it gives you let's see if it's actually gonna give it yep so this is the rest of your map uh, all of these are basically the areas you need to reclaim. Uh, they're referred to as dungeons when you uh, go into them. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, all of the quests you get also pop up on here. And you can see here it tells you, hey, your quests are unlocked. You've got new characters available. You've got new codex uh, from all the stuff that we just did, just from that conversation. Okay, so we're going to go over to this one. Time progresses. We're going to go into the unassuming glade. It's going to 
tells us we've, it's going to take us three days to explore, and there are three phases to this quest. Uh, if you you can leave at any time during a normal quest, but if you do, you abandon the quest or, or the dungeon midway through. It uses all the days still. So even if we just did one section here, if we left, it would cost us all three days. So you have to be careful. Um, go ahead and jump in here. Uh, while you don't have to heal in between necessarily. So what exactly are we doing here, Griffith? Looking for the beast. And why are we doing this? To end its reign of terror and bring peace to the land. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and skip over it just to continue the story here. And we see the beast, who will totally not be our next party member. Here we go. She does a berserker thing, just claws, and is way more is interesting of a character than I was expecting. Um, you'll notice there, one of the things I did is uh, intentionally minimized how much I moved before I used his dynamic entry, and that was so I could walk back away afterwards. It doesn't make a huge difference, but I don't want to have K have to walk up further. Let's go. Take this. When he inevitably has to come up because Griffith can't hit the broadside of a barn. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and do Boisterous Challenge, and then I'm going to move aside. I'm hoping she still goes after Griffith, since she's taunted, she should. She hits like a ton of bricks, as you may have noticed. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and have Kay get the weakened effect out on her. And it looks like he just hit Battle Tide and got Griffith Aegis also. For great justice. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna move him back in front. And we're gonna crescent swipe. Uh, if you're wondering why I moved Griffith out of the way, um, okay. Even if we tried to do this, you see there the red uh, eye icon. Um, you. It, targeting on this is very sensitive when it comes to uh, line of sight. If there is anything, if you're passing through any of this square, it does not work uh, for most of the th uh, most of the things in the game. You can push the L key, and it'll show you where each of the things that can block line of sight is. That includes your allies. And that's kind of actually where the problem comes in. Because uh, there's a lot of times where you'll have a, a back row character like Kay who want to shoot strike. and not be able to. Okay. Now we're going to be able to finishing touch. Which always hits. And we win. The fabled beast appears to have slowed down. She doesn't look like a bandit, or a beast for that matter. Why would she be terrorizing the locals? I do not think we can expect civil reasoning from her, sire. I would suggest caution in your attempts to communicate. And then? You win. You speak. There are no words between predator and prey, yes? In defeat, our roles are reversed. If words are shared, it shall be so, by your choosing. What? Are you the beast that stalks Rashtil? Rashtil? Such a name is unknown to me. You speak of names, of names that impose boundaries, but these are not mine. We share a sky, but the boundary is not mine. The mark is not mine. 
The territory is not mine. I understood nothing. Neither did I. Hacks, tribes, kin, rights. The Kelra way, our way, my way. I guess that explains the outburst. Sort of. There is strength in such bonds, as in all bonds born out of respect. Okay, we're gonna keep going just so I can get through a little bit more and show off uh, a little bit more of the game. So, the other pieces of the dungeon, you've got uh, the camp. Um, if any of your characters die during a quest, or during a dungeon, uh, they can't be used for the rest of the dungeon until you get to a camp. Each camp, uh, you also can't save unless you're in a camp. Um, I'm gonna double check. Okay, good. I, I was just double checking to make sure my, uh, my main game file didn't get overwritten. Um, <laughs> when I started the new file, I wasn't 100% sure. That's part of why I hesitated on doing this. Uh, you also get little conversations here. So most of the time, there's two characters and they're arguing. We will talk later. And when you talk to them, let's see if it reflects that here. Personal bonds. I think the first levels are. So because we agreed with him, we can get the personal bond with him right away. We have to wait on hers until we get a chance to talk to her again. So there's little scenes like that all throughout the game, and it does affect the game, what you choose. It affects how your relationship is with your characters, how long it takes for each one. And from what it said, there will be more. Signy gestures for you to wait. Signy is the, the beast. And around. Okay. So, uh... This is the other type, uh, are these text adventures, they call them. So, you totally get to basically just navigate through this way. And I don't think that one in particular has any options, but some of them you can avoid fights or get better items depending on what you pick. Okay, so this is what the normal fights look like. You have your main objective, Defeat all enemies, and you have two challenges. So they want to win in seven turns and defeat two enemies in one shot. I don't remember that wizard being there last time. <laughs> okay. But we have Signy now, and that will make this a lot better. She hits like a ton of bricks. She's very powerful, but she's kind of a glass cannon. Typical barbarian character. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just run all the way up with her, and we're gonna blitz and pounce. You can see there, she has ridiculous mobility. I purposely blocked her off so that not all the enemies will be able to rush in at once. She'll only get hacked the one time, most likely. Unless they're smart enough to go around her. We're gonna pull her back out after this. But you get to choose the order of your uh, abilities. So we're going to go ahead and, let's see, I don't think I can get up far enough to command her, so we're going to command Take this. Griffith, and then move up here. At your side. Uh, for Griffith, we're just going to have him move up because we don't have a good path for him to charge on. I 
I don't know why this wizard is here. That makes me a little nervous. Because those are scary. So, you can use any part of your movement before and after each attack. So, in this case, we're going to move her over here. We're going to Whirlwind, which does tons of damage. And then we're going to move her all the way out. And I don't think the, any of the enemies are going to be able to get all the way up to her. So even though she got hit and is a little bit low on health, because of the movement she's got and the fact that she can do that hit and run, she's okay going for, for the next round. Okay, we're going to give her another, a little bit of a health boost. You can see there again, her health is down, but, her sh but now she has some shields on top of it. And then I'm, I'm actually going to move K over here the time to kind now. of potentially draw attacks. Um, so we're going to move two squares there. He's going to do dynamic entry. We are not done yet. Uh, his special is he gets three more movement points when he defeats an enemy. So now he's got some movement to go. And I'm actually going to have him... Let's see, 425, they're still both full. Uh, I'm not going to go too far, but I am going to have him get between the enemy and Sigmi. Mm, a curious thing. That I did not see coming. I knew they had that ability, I just wasn't aware. Okay. Oh, I really wish he hadn't done that. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. Uh, the mages have a special ability called Parry up. Parry is a status effect that absorbs one hit. So no matter what the attack is, it does nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and do Savage Roar, which panics those guys. They have to take movement away from Sig. I believe. Okay, we're gonna go over here. Shoot this guy. Watch this. That gets third uh, battle tide, and he ended up giving himself At a defense boost. Um, and we're gonna have him come over here and do a boisterous challenge. No, now, the reason we're doing this, despite the fact that he's... Mm, you know, probably could have done some damage to one life. of these guys, or possibly killed one of them, especially with his finisher, is because we want to get that prowl. bonus of killing two enemies in one shot. So we're going to have Signe use her special, which is called Massacre. And it does exactly what you'd expect. Unfortunately, she spread it out too thin and only killed one guy. I thought she was gonna... Oh, well. I thought she was gonna um, only hit those two. Please stand by while we assassinate you. <laughs> so, I'm probably not gonna get to Here kill two enemies in one swing uh, at this point, and I don't want to risk uh, this Watch mage this. trying to kill Signy. Although, apparently, it might not matter. Okay, and then Signy goes first. Um, you do have to be careful because her attacks are- her AoE attacks do hit friendlies. Whirlwind, which she slaughtered me with is very powerful. And we ended up getting a uh, magic item drop for her. We also got some building components uh, and gemstones, which are the uncommon level. There's three levels of pretty much everything from what I can tell. Uh, these are the common ones, the green. Uh, uncommon are the blue gemstones and then magic items that are more powerful. Um, there's also a, uh, like a purplish 
and then a gold. Uh, also, little... Because this game is kind of tongue-in-cheek at times, uh, the currency Diloc is DLC. I'm pretty sure that's on purpose. And also, uh, relationship points are RP. <laughs> okay, then you finish the dungeon. The days, the three days go past, and it tells you what happened in the meantime. So, again, we're kind of just gonna skip over this. Once we get a little bit of what's going on. And, uh... Get our merchant... And it takes a day to get back, and each link along the way is a day. So you have to plan out your trips, basically. We're not actually too... This is still all the tutorial. Um, okay, we get back. We meet the merchant. I believe? Oh, joy. Okay. No. So, I go through, have a little conversation. This is kind of the end of the the intro. So, Grandpa wants to set a goal for us. Here, your tasks will be. And he gives you a two-month objective. Each chapter is two months, um, and you have to complete five kingdom quests during that time. Uh, from what I've played through, that is the continuous goal. Uh, you have to continue getting more kingdom quests. Uh, also, random thing, your characters don't level up individually. They level up as a party. And you can see now here, these are some of the options for um, your perks you get stuff like health bonus damage initiative bonus uh, gets you the order you want make sure you go before enemies uh i have k with a very very high initiative since he buffs characters and i want to make sure he gets a chance to buff signy before she runs out into the fray like she did last time and almost dies um you get a lot of different options as well as these uh uh, skill morph abilities, which are like in this case, K can use command without having line of sight, which is really nice for him being able to heal the rest of the party. I'm gonna jump over to kingdom quests. So yeah, each of the dungeons you complete is one building and up or building and upgrading the buildings is the second one. Building relationships with other people and other countries. Leveling up your party. Crafting. And catching fish. So far. I'm not sure if it's going to unlock more there or not, but... It has a fishing minigame. That's how you know it's a, a game with... <laughs> you know, any sort of uh, town building or something. Uh, wandering around. I'm pretty sure, like... I, Breath of Fire 2 has a little bit of that. Uh, Stardew Valley. You know, there's a lot of random fishing mini games in in games out there. Okay, so we've unlocked the Kingdom Quest. It keeps track of it down here for you. It tells you how many days you have left. Uh, you've got all your different options there and your buildings. So you can construct any buildings that you have the people for. So in this case, merchant house. We have a building. Hooray. Uh, for a lot. And that does take up time also. Um, for a lot of the buildings, upgrading the buildings themselves doesn't do anything. Um, but what it does let you do is improve your relationship with the characters in that area. You are locked off basically until you get to that point. Anyone with the exclamation point like that has a personal bond you can strengthen. 
Uh, you get your diplomatic missives about those two relationships. I almost wish that there was some other dynamic between the four, um, instead of it just being two opposing ones. But, I mean, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> so yeah, and then obviously you can venture forth with your full party now. And go to any of the nearby areas. So yeah, um, I'm gonna, I believe I'm gonna end it here, um, for now, just cause it's kind of what I wanted to show. That's why I started skipping through this stuff, cause I wanted to get to this point so I can, could just show you kind of how the game really plays, what all the stuff you have available is. Other random nice thing. Uh, it tells you when everyone <laughs> is available for different stuff, so different characters do different things. Um, so the days where they're not available, the white days here, um, you cannot get your personal bond closer with them. So the whole game is, while it's, you know, kind of a silly game, silly role-playing game with some over-the-top characters and all things considered a relatively simple battle system there's a lot of little depth to it with the way that you handle you know you've got 50 days to take care of five things what are those five things gonna be if you go out you know you're taking a dungeon takes six seven days usually at least, just for the dungeon, plus you have one to get there and one, one day to get there, one day to get back. So, you know, hey, you could go you could go try and clear five dungeons all in one go, and that would take care of it. You're probably going to die a lot, unless maybe if you're on story mode. I'm on the normal difficulty, which has been somewhat challenging, especially on the, the dungeons where they are a little bit longer. And you have to, you know, sustain yourself throughout. Um, so that's probably not practical. What else are you going to do? You know, you have to build X number of houses, but you don't have the resources to do that unless you go out and go through a dungeon. So you have to go to the dungeon to get the resources to build some houses and upgrade your relationships so you can get better stuff so you can go back out. It's a good system, and the perks and trinkets, well, I mean, right now 100 health doesn't seem like much, and it's not, but you can really tweak, especially as you get more down here and you get more skill morphs, you can kind of shift the way some of these characters are configured. Uh, I'm probably going to be taking Griffith in a more aggressive direction and trying to boost his accuracy because it's really bad. Um, I realize that, you know, Kay's is the same, but he's mostly, I, I mostly spend time with him healing. Uh, Signe's very, very high damage, so she's very useful that way. But there's ways that you can make her a little bit more well-rounded. You can get her, uh, she has a good dodge rate, so you can increase that with, uh, you know with her items and with her perks stuff like that um so yeah that's uh that's kind of a quick overview of regalia i know there were i'm gonna go back over the video and make sure there's that the talking isn't at the or that when i'm talking at the same time as them that it doesn't get completely lost or it's not completely annoying i apologize for that this is the first game i've played on this with voiceover and it feels kind of awkward because i feel like i'm supposed to be responding and talking but especially during those intro cutscenes, there's not really a good break for it um so yeah uh this is on i i got it through kickstarter so I got lucky. I'm very glad I did. Um, I would highly suggest checking this game out if you get a chance. It's 
available on Steam. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Like I said, my main uh, my main playthrough is on chapter three at this point. Probably got eight hours or so in. It's a pretty beefy game as far as just how much is available and with the different factions and the uh, stuff like that, I'm very curious if there's going to be some some branching to the ways that you play the the rest of the game later on or if it's just some minor stuff. It may just be not it may not be a big part of the game, but I don't know yet. And I think that'll be a big impact on how replayable the game uh, th like I said earlier, there are two difficulties. There's one for people who just want to concentrate on the story. that makes the fighting a little bit easier. But it's a really good challenging fighting system. Um, I've had some, some very close calls and had to do some kind of creative strategies that largely involved Kay standing behind somebody and desperately buffing their health back up while they tank and do tiny amounts of damage. <laughs> That's probably not the best way to do it, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So yeah, uh, I also just want to mention all of the aesthetics to the game, the music, the art, um, the possible exception of the, uh, the base character models, like while you're walking around. I mean, even the little loading screen guy, the little sketch there. Uh, I mean, the, the character models are really good, except the face is kind of... Uh, it reminds me of Final Fantasy Tactics, <laughs> except for the fact that the rest of the art style doesn't match. Um, and it's worse for some characters than others, like, I think because his hair is in his face, and the lack of nose isn't as abrupt. But the portraits are amazing. The, the backgrounds have a really cool look to them. Um, battlefields you know look neat um the menu it, it, yeah even the menus the town you know all of that the art's really good and it's really enjoyable i like the different styles that they use for different aspects of it the music's good the voice acting is good um the writing is is really on point like i said before it can be a little sometimes uh and i mean you're gonna get that, but it's not as bad as some things could be, uh, or as some things are. Uh, and overall, it's not that bad as far as that aspect goes, and it's it's funny, so it's worth it. <laughs> There's actual funny characters and enjoyable stuff, and while the characters are kind of like Gwendolyn's really obnoxious. Griffith can be really over the top at times. Uh, Elaine is kind of an airhead. <laughs> That's an understatement. And Kay is the worst of, all, you know, the worst traits of all three. But the way that they interact with each other and the way they interact with others is really entertaining, and I really am. so. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give me a like and subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you want to see me do more of these types of videos where I'm talking about the games and just doing a demo, uh, like a demo of it, as opposed to the the full let's play. Uh, I may do a full let's play of this later. I was just already I, I hadn't tried it yet, and <laughs> by the time the idea struck me. I was, uh, I was several hours into the game and didn't want to start over. So, I will probably be doing a let's play of this eventually down the road after I finish a first playthrough and uh, hopefully have some of the other longer games like the Quintet stuff out of the way. But yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I will probably do another similar video to this of another uh, longer game that you may not be aware exists uh, that's an indie Steam game 
uh, just to just to kind of show it off. So let me know what you think, and we'll catch you next time.